In this presentation, we're going to look at Vogel's approximation method. This is a transportation uh, problem, and the idea is that we have to sort out a in least cost initial solution to this problem. This is a essentially the sort of general structure of a transportation problem. We have the demand over here that we write long that we write in the columns, and we have the suppliers here. Let's call that supply. And what we have here is how much each uh, supplier can supply. So we have three suppliers, A1, A2, A3. And A1 can supply eight units. Uh, A2 has 10 units to supply. A3 has 20 units to supply. But the demand uh, from the four depots is different. Uh, B1 demands only six. B2 demands eight. B3 demands 9 and B4 demands 15. Just as a remark, this is a balanced problem, okay, that the supply equals demand. Uh, it's not really much of an issue if the. Uh, actually, I'll probably do a separate video where, the, uh, un, where we have unbalanced supply just in case that comes up. But anyway, if you're just used to Vogel's, or get, well, I want to get a quick introduction to Vogel's approximation method. Uh, stick around. So, uh, just as a finally, what we have here uh, it is the cost from shipping from supplier A1 to A B1. <coughs> For example, the cost per unit, even the cost per unit uh, from shipping from A2 to B1 is seven. So, if you're shipping ten units, the cost is seventy, and so on. So, these are all the costs. Okay. So the, we have 12 cost values there, okay. Now, what is Vogel's approximation method? So essentially what we're going to do is write the difference of minimum cost and next to minimum cost, so lowest and second lowest, and find the difference between the two, and write it in the penalty column. So essentially what we're doing is calculating a penalty, okay. And we're going to do that for both the rows and the columns. Okay, so we're going to c construct the penalty row and penalty column, but we're actually going to consider them together. Okay, so it's not that we have the penalty row on one side and penalty cost on the other side, and they are actually just essentially continuations of each other. So it's, I'm going to put a little arrow that, or that's not meant to be an arrow, but essentially they are essentially just the, the same set of values. Okay. So there's continued. Uh, one is a continuation of the other. Now, uh, let's pick take the rows first. Row one, row two, row three. And what we're going to do is pick out the lowest cost. I'm going to do it very slowly in this instance, but later on I will be a bit quicker about it. And uh, what I'm going to do is pick out the lowest cost in each cell, in each row. And then the, I'm going to do that first. So this is the lowest cost in that row. This is the lowest cost in that row, and that's the lowest cost in that row. The lowest, the next to lowest cost is in the second lowest cost is there for that row, there for that row, and there for that row. Now what I'm going to do over here is write down the differences between the, the lowest and next to lowest. Now you can put them in as absolute values, so the difference there is 1, 1, and 1. We're going to do the same thing now for the columns. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that. The highlighting there and just start again, did the same thing again. So we're going to look at the columns now. This column, this column, this column, and this column. And we're going to uh, populate the values of the, of the penalty row down the bottom. So let's pick out the lowest. That's the lowest for that column. 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 Uh, the next lowest is 2 for that column. We'll just pick that one there. It's actually a tie, but we'll just pick that one there just to have something filled in. Uh, 5 for that column and 2 for that column. And what we'll do again is fill out the penalty rows, uh, the pe calculate the penalties, which is the difference between the two. 4 minus 2, 2, 3 minus 1, 2, 5 minus 4, 1, 2 minus 1, 1. Okay. Now, so we have 7 penalties costs calculated, okay, and again, we're treating them as the same set of numbers. Identify the maximum penalties. In this case, it was columns one and two. I'm just going to flick back there. So it was these two here. Now, uh, 
what we're going to do is pick out the uh, a column or row that has the maximum penalties. So in a tiebreaker, you can really just pick one at random almost. Uh, consider, well actually there, there is a couple of rules of thumb what to do in a tiebreaker, but I'm not too convinced, but, well essentially I've not seen any proper mathematical proof. Uh, so essentially we're, uh, we're just going to pick uh, the first column, column 1. Oh no, but yeah, we're going to pick the first column and allocate, this is important now, allocate the maximum units to the place where the cost is minimum. Okay, so let's go back up here. Uh, what are we going to do? So we're going to use the first column here, okay, and where is the cost, the minimum? Let's just take out the highlight in there for a second. So it's this column here, that one there. Uh, now, B1, oh, uh, this. so it's actually this cell here, uh, the top cell of the column. The lowest cost, the, the lowest cost of that uh, column is two units, which is the top cell. Now, B1, this this column corresponds to B1. It's only looking for six units. Uh, A1 can supply eight, but again, B1 only needs six, so we're going to allocate six there. Okay. Uh, just as a remark, um, B1 has a full supply uh, is fully supplied now. Uh, two, uh, eight one has had eight, eight units. Now it, it's just dispatched six, so it only has two left. So now we're down to thirty-two. Okay. So there we go. Write the remaining stock in row one, and after okay. So what we're going to do now is remove essentially the first column from the problem. So we sent six there and the cost was 2. We're going to do the same thing again now. Um, we're going to pick out the, the uh, penalty costs and I'll just, I'll just rub them out and just do them again. Now let's be clear about something. We're only doing it for um, the remaining rows and columns. We are not going to uh, work with B1 anymore because it's done. So it's taken out of the problem essentially. So it's only these cells we're going to work with. So the lowest here is 1, the next lowest is 3, so the difference there is 2. The lowest here is 3, the next lowest is 4, the difference is 1. Lowest here is 1, the next lowest there is 2, so the difference there is 1. Uh, on this side, well the penalties don't change, they're the same as they were the last time around, so I'll just put them in again, 2, 1, 1. Now, we've got another tiebreaker situation. The maximum, highest penalty cost is the top row, or this column here. Uh, so what I'll do in this instance is I'll pick out the top row. Okay. Now, so it's A1, has two units left, the minimum cost cell is to B4, so I'm going to allocate both my re remaining units to B4. The cost there is 1. Uh, just as a remark, that means that uh, B4 only now requires 13 units and A1 has got no stock left. Okay, And as a result, the, the total, there's still 30 units to be sorted out. Okay. So that's that one done. Now, next thing we're going to do is, let's see now, so there was six here and two here. The cost was, this is just so we can add up the uh, total cost at the end. And again, I'm going to rub out the values there so I can do them in again. So these cells we're going to look at here. The problem is starting to get uh, get quite small now. In fact, once you've done a few of them, the, you, you will actually uh, be run out of options. So penalty cost here on a row A2 is uh, 3 and 4, the difference there is 1, 1 and 2, the difference there is 1, 1 and 3, the difference there is 2, 7 and 4, the difference there is 3, 
and 2 and 6 the difference there is 4 so we're going to pick this column again or we're going to pick this column actually um, we are going to go where the minimum cost is so it's this cell here now B4 only requires 13 A3 has 20 supply to supply just watch out for that if only had 11 supply we could only send 11 but is it, uh, just making the number 11 up off the top of my head just because it's less than 13 but we're going to send all of th um, 13 units required by B4 from A3 okay so B4 uh, has demands uh, its demands are met now it doesn't require any more and a3 only has seven units left so there are 17 items to take care of okay so we've just done a big bunch of work there in one fell swoop so moving on and again let's just keep track of what we've allocated 6 to 13 and the cost was 2 1 and 2 right so what have we here we have only got four cells left two rows and two columns now quickly I'll just sort of remark that that's one here penalty cost there is one penalty cost here is six penalty cost here is three penalty cost here is two and this row here has the maximum penalty cost so we're going to allocate as much as we can there uh, on that row uh, the minimum cell, the minimum cost cell is this one here. It, uh, B2 still requires 8 units but A3 only has 7 left so we can only send 7 there. Okay. Now this is where the problem starts to uh, uh, wrap itself up very quickly. If there is seven there, that means that all seven have been allocated, and A3 has nothing left. Also, B2 only requires one more. Okay, so we're down to our last ten items. <coughs> Do you know? I'll just continue this on here. Okay, sorry. I'll just finish it here. So. We only got, we still have ten items to sort out, and they can only come from A2 because A2 is the only uh, supplier that still has stock. So we're going to send one of those units, the remaining unit to A2 from A2 to B2, and we're going to send nine units to B3. Because again, we've no options now. We've we've sort of solved the problem. Okay, so this is the overall answer here okay so first off we have the number of units and also we have the cost per unit there so two times one so the total cost is what is it there so it is 12 3 7 36 2 and 26 so the total cost essentially let's add all of those up I'm just gonna go up and down 2 by 6 was 12 uh, top row let's just work top row the next uh, plus 2 let's move down to the next row just to calculate the total cost plus 3 plus 36 plus 7 plus 26 working that out that is just make a note there 14 17 51 is that right 53 even and uh, 60 so that's just running total and 86 so the total answer is total uh, cost is 86 units using the Vogel approximation method that's our initial cost uh, initial allocation lowest cost initial allocation that's the Vogel approximation method thank you